We're in the Antique Wireless Museum. We're in Bloomfield, New York. And one would say, why would you have it in Bloomfield? It's because the three guys that started it in 1952 came from Bloomfield. You could translate it and say, old radio museum. But we're much bigger than that. We're dedicated to the history and technology of all communications. That's about 200 years worth of technology. This is, this is fascinating, to really see the history that unfolds here, uh, and particularly someone who kind of, you know, patterns the, the broadcasting career that I have, the years that I have spent. Uh, I find myself relating to a, a great deal of the, of the content here. It goes back to my Army days when I was uh, at basic training in Fort Dix. Uh, I was all excited. At the end of basic training, they said, you're going to radio school. I said, well, this is great. This is what I want to be. I want to be a disc jockey. I want to be an announcer. Uh, this will be great. I walked in that first day and they said, you're here for six weeks to learn Morse code. <laughs> so the very first item when I walked in the door was that Morse code, you know, the, the telegraph key that uh, became a very much a part of my life for those, those years in the Army. People like the, the Titanic exhibit. People like the book that Samuel Morse's personal notebook in which he designed the first telegraph line from Baltimore to Washington in 1844. That's here in the museum. We have the first transistor radio that was ever made. Uh, we have the 1,000 watt spark transmitter. We have Voice of America station. We have the Western Union exhibit that shows a telegraph office from about 1900. I was looking for, I had to admit, because I remember from years ago, I was looking for the, the studio camera uh, that I remember running uh, when, when I just started out. And part of that was running the studio camera for Tom Decker and Bob Mills and all of the news people there. And that camera, I'm pretty sure, is the same one that uh, was one of three or four cameras that we had in the studio. With the four or five lenses in the front, and you would, you know, rack the lens, no zoom lenses back then. Uh, so to see that, and some of the equipment that uh, I ran into the control room as an engineer and to see some of that kind of takes you back to your roots a little bit. I had two fourth graders wanted to hear about the first cell phone and we have the very first cell phone that was ever made. She said, well, where's the screen? I said, it didn't have a screen. Well, how did you do text messaging without a screen? Well, you can't because it didn't do text messaging. That came along a lot later. But the artifacts are not everything. It's the stories that go with them. We try to bring every visitor around and tell them the story. I think for a parent or a grandparent, as I was able to do today, to explain to someone the technology that they grew up with, I think can be a fascinating bonding experience for a family as well. I think it's important that kids have some sort of a spark in their life to get into engineering, mathematics, science, and we feel that the museum is a way of sparking some of that interest in those, in those sciences. And the kids that have been in here, they run around and they make noise, and they run from one exhibit to the other. And for someone that spends a gazillion of hours uh, volunteering my time, that's what makes it all worthwhile.